Welcome to the Developer Spotlight on the Full Dive Gaming Podcast. In the Developer Spotlight, we sit down with VR industry professionals. Today, we're here with David Kahn, creator of the new intergalactic fishing adventure game, Galactic Catch. David, thank you so much for coming on with us. Oh, thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Hey, we're excited to have you here while we're saying thanks. Of course, we got to thank the sponsor of our podcast, Asterion Products. You probably know them out there. They make beautiful VR, AR headsets, stands, mats, and other accessories. And if you use code FULLDIVE10 on Amazon, you're going to save another 10% on us. David, I'm, we're really excited to have you here because you've got a long history with the VR industry, but we're here because Galactic Catch has launched. If someone's never heard of this game, what do you tell them it's all about? It's all about fishing, number one thing. So. <laughs> Intergalactic fishing is kind of the, the two words to sum it up. Uh, you are playing the role of a menial task robot uh, in charge of helping your friends uh, that have been captured, swallowed uh, by a giant whale-like creature. Uh, in order to do that, you have to go through uh, the act of fishing, uh, uh, playing the fishing game uh, through multiple locations, multiple worlds, uh, and with the goal of you mastering the art of fishing uh, in order to save your friends. Uh, but in the end, the core of it is it's intergalactic fun adventure fishing game. So fun. It definitely kind of gives me sort of Astrobot vibes because mm. it's just it's like pretty and like simple and nice and saving people. I love it. <laughs> so we've been playing VR games and experiences from your studio since way back in the Gear VR days. Yep. Our first and probably most important question, is it pronounced Baobab? Baobab, Bobob, how do you pronounce this? <laughs> it depends on the day, I would say, uh, uh, and, and how lazy or uh, on target you want to be. Um, the two ways that most people pronounce it is Baobab Studios. That's how I would say um, white people would pronounce it. Uh, and, you know, uh, <laughs> like myself, you know, and uh, uh, but there's also the other way of uh, Biobob Studios uh, that is pronounced. Um, and it's all based on the, the origins of the studio is based on the idea of the Madagascar tree. Um, so Eric Darnell was the creator uh, and director of all the Madagascar films. And uh, that was kind of the origin of the, the idea of a tree as the Baobab tree is one kind of the, uh, is the iconic trees in Madagascar region. Um, where the roots are, uh, the roots and the tree, it really is most of it's underground, um, where it kind of creates this really large ecosystem that you don't really see. And it's kind of an inverted tree that, you know, that is very odd and unique compared to other trees out there. Ah, nice. That makes me feel a little better because uh, Eric from Q2C <laughs> podcast, he was saying it very Bayo Bob ish, and I was not <laughs> pronouncing it that way. So I feel a little better about it all. Business Insider was talking about you guys, and they said mm -hmm. to think of Baobab Studios as the Pixar of VR, with your studio being responsible, obviously, for some of the biggest names in interactive VR films and games. Like you've had Oprah in one, John Legend, Ethan Hawke. Tell us mm -hmm. about what it's like to work with these big names. You know, it's really chill and down to earth, you know, for the most part. One of the projects I worked on was called uh, Bobby Aga. Uh, and, uh, if, I don't know if you guys remember, but you know, 2000, you know, 21, like everything was shut down. You know, you know, like in the VR space, you couldn't, uh, you know, uh, you know, do events, you couldn't do in-person things or anything like that. And so we had this film, uh, the VR uh, film called uh, Bobby Ga, that we were releasing at kind of the end of 2021, early 2022, and we had to come up with a way to get a premiere and showcase to people. And so we created this interactive uh, virtual reality premiere party where everyone can go to kind of Bobby Got World and, and do it. And I, the most fun thing about that was that uh, I had to work with you know, Jennifer Hudson and Daisy Ridley to teach them how to put on VR headsets, how to get <laughs> oh into a virtual world. And, oh. and, and I was interacting with them not as you know, just one-on-one -on -one in person, but there are virtual avatar personas that look like look like them um, and navigating around kind of this virtual space as, you know, as if there were anyone else, you know, out there. So, you know, it's it's amazing to work with people that I would say uh, want to do something experimental, want to do something that is kind of next generation. And um, and that's the reason they work, work with Baobab. So, you know, they know that we're experts in the space and they're doing something that Normally, they don't get a chance to do, you know, in traditional film and TV, really being part of the experience, having people interact with their characters, not just watch the characters mm -hmm. on stage or on screen, and 
really, you know, something that is memorable, uh, that it will stand the test of time. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's, it's just funny because in the VR industry, you know, just like you, I've been in this a long time. And yeah. so it's still surprising to meet people that don't know how to use a headset or have mm -hmm. never tried it. It's like, we've been doing this practically a decade now. So that's so surprising. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, it was also one of those things of like, even the simplest things you, you would think that like we, you know, you guys and, you know, and people in the space get of like, how to access something, how to turn it on the headset, like how to just even do the basic setup is like one of those things for, uh, you know, someone who's new or, or, you know, maybe is not as new to technology in general, you know, it takes some handholding to do still, mm. you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, but once they get into it, they're amazed by it. Uh, it's just kind of taking them over that kind of first step. It's always interesting to see, you know, how much it takes to get people in certain people. There's a mm -hmm. little bit more walking through than others. I now I'm feeling like insecure about saying the studio name. I'm just gonna keep saying Bow Bob. No, that's perfect. what I say. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> like I, you said, I would say you there's know, no wrong, wrong way to say it. So yeah. like you know, like, that's like, nice. As I long as you get the, the 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 B and like you know the ending correct, then, you know, then it's all good. Then Bob. Good. Yeah. Bow Bob. <laughs> So our first experience with Bow Bob was Invasion mm -hmm. on Gear VR and then again on PSVR. And this experience was so adorable and it seems to have spawned its own universe. There's aliens in it and they're, they've are they been the main characters in a your Asteroids experience mm -hmm. and now Galactic Catch involves some of these same aliens and spaceship and kind of some of the environments are, you know, we are familiar to us. Do all Bow Bob games and films possibly take place in the same universe we have never officially uh talked about it um uh so we 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 have kind of briefly talked about the idea of bonfire and invasion living in the same universe and just different kind of time periods within it um and as you play galactic catch there's lots of easter eggs and homages to to uh bonfire uh, mm -hmm. Like one one of the lures you collect is a creature we call Pork Bun, who's like the main, one of the main characters ah, um, in, yes. in Bonfire, kind of the um, a beach ball with tentacles. I would say is kind of like the, the way I would describe the character. Um, but we never kind of officially confirmed that. Um, but I would say we're trying as much as possible to uh, reward people who have tried one or more of our experiences uh, as Easter eggs and you know connection points. And making it kind of clear that we uh, we embrace and we appreciate the community who's followed us along all these years and all of our different experiences. That's awesome. I love that. It's always nice to see like familiar characters and spaces. And it's like it just gives you all those nostalgia, all the nostalgia mm -hmm. from like, oh, my gosh, from back in the day, our little friends. And what's interesting, too, is that when, you, when you mentioned kind of invasion and mac and cheese. So mac and cheese are the two alien characters that are introduced in Invasion. So, um, you know, uh, they're kind of a Lauren Hardy uh, uh, duo where one's, one is more of a outgoing, eccentric, goofy kind of personality. And the other one, uh, Mac, uh, kind of the shorter one of, of the two, is kind of the grumpy exterior, no nonsense type, type personality that you kind of get introduced to a little bit in Invasion and then much more in Asteroids. And then they are the they are the ones you have to save in Galactic Catch. And the interesting thing about that is that there is kind of a through story with that, where uh, if you have experience invasion, experience asteroids, uh, the task robot that you are, the the character you play in Galactic Catch, is the same robot that you play in Asteroids, where you are starting to learn and how to bond with mac and cheese and save them in that situation. And then as a as pseudo as a reward, they appreciate you a little bit better. They embrace you a little bit more. And then once again, you have to go through the same set of actions to save them again and again in <laughs> Galactic Catch and potentially other things in the future. But it, we, we try to uh, approach uh, asteroids and invasion as this kind of continuous journey of misadventures with mac and cheese, where they're supposed to be these world conquerors. They're supposed to be the, the duo that invades the earth, um, kind of like War of the Worlds, you know, Amash War of the Worlds, but they always fail. Um, they, <laughs> and they always fail in a hu humorous ways, ways, you know, being uh, you know, uh, destroyed by a bunny in the first one and have to escape Earth. <laughs> but the idea with Invasion was always that it was going to be a series of shorts uh, with Invasion being the first one, but always kind of repeat of the same thing where uh, Mac and Cheese try to invade the Earth, but some type of cute, cuddly creature, you know, a, a hawk, 
um, you know, uh, you know, uh, other other animals uh, thwart them without the humans ever knowing uh, that that they they've been sa- the earth has been saved by uh, the the animals of the world. <laughs> Ah, I like that. It's funny because I felt like we saw Invasion long before anything Mm -hmm. else. And when you see Invasion, you kind of assume that if this were to continue, the protagonists, the bunnies would be the ones the story centers around. So it's been interesting to see this journey of continued experiences and games coming where you learn more about mac and cheese. It kind of starts to melt your heart a little towards them because in the first Invasion, they were, I would pretty clearly say the antagonist. Oh yeah, completely, and, and and that's kind of the the funny and the aspect and uh, dichotomy of it. That in the end of the day, they are still world conquerors. Like that is mm-hmm. their job. You know, they are looking for different ways to invade the Earth and take over Earth and other planets. So in the end, they are those kind of bad guys. They are not necessarily the good guys, but they're just not very good at their job. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's the main thing. Um, and so you have to you embrace them, you love them for that fact, even if in the end of the day. Yeah, they will, you know, they they will want to repeat War of the Worlds and take over the (laughs) Earth if they could. Uh, I love it. I I do find that as they go on, they become more endearing because they become, like you said, they become relatable. They become lovable because they're Mm -hmm. just... They're trying to do their job and they're terrible at it. Yes. But they're cute. You know, I appreciate that. The You made these VR films first. You've stepped more into games or at least more interactive experiences. And I wonder, has that helped you having that experience in the past? Because I was surprised at how beautiful Galactic Cash looked. You get in and the worlds look amazing. Everything you're holding looks really good, even just on standalone Quest. Yeah, we, we tried as much as possible to emulate Invasion and Asteroids in terms of look and feel with Galactic Cash. Uh, kind of the world bible kind of was set with with those and we wanted to really expand what would the universe look like uh in this invasion uh asteroids universe since we never actually really mentioned what the world looks like what a planet looks like besides earth it was a little bit of us trying to emulate that look and feel but also really be experimental of what are different alien worlds so we kind of got we got inspiration from everything from from retro sci-fi from like 1950s pulp fiction uh that you know imagine these world these fantastic worlds that were completely unrealistic that you know you know like giant mushrooms sprouting out <laughs> everywhere uh, you know cats in space like if you, if you look at it like classic like 1930s 1940s 1950s pulp fiction it is kind of all over the place in terms of what's like possible uh, and then we tried as much as possible to push kind of limits of what we could do on mobile vr with the biggest challenge being how do we create really large bodies of water uh, on the quest on the quest two because mm-hmm. that is by far kind of the biggest kind of performance and memory hit that we take is really kind of having this really large body of realistic looking water but still adding kind of these fantastical elements of alien life alien uh alien surroundings to make it both feel familiar to players but also just something you want to spend you know 40 minutes, 50 minutes, an hour in escaping, relaxing and not have to really worry about, you know, the outside world while you're doing it. It is gorgeous. I love the mushrooms. I always like. Thank you. Big mushrooms and in VR stuff. It's just pretty. (laughs) It's just fun. You don't see it in real life. I love it. Yeah. One of the worlds we tried to do really early on was uh, a world that uh, you were on the back of a giant uh, creature, like a giant fish. Oh, cool. Uh, And what we found out and hopefully we'll figure out a way to get this in. What we found out is that the more kind of movement and motion we add to all these things, the more sickening it gets to uh, uh, just be able to enjoy, you know, the, fo- the focusing on the fishing. Um, and so we've experimented with all these different worlds, all these different concepts to kind of finally get to kind of, you know, you know, what do you see in the game right now? Mushrooms, you know, and lava and, you know, underground caves and other things that allow people to be immersed by the same time not really distract too much from the fishing um, Mm. because that's kind of the big thing that we found with some of the kind of early ideas we experimented with. I was wondering, I was kind of surprised when this game came out that it's a fishing game since it's, you know, kind of alien outer space Mm -hmm. franchise. What made you want to make a fishing style game for yeah, this? It's a weird combination of factors. uh, I, I would say one is we were looking for different fun adventures that, we could take mac and cheese and the characters on, but at the same time, we didn't want to do something that was a shooter or, uh, you know, uh, too hardcore in terms of realism or 
uh, you know, too mature in terms of the kind of content and so on. Since we're, you know, the Invasion Asteroids universe is really PG, PG-13, mm. we try as much as possible to be family friendly with our content to be. Uh, and so we came with a bunch of different ideas, uh, everything from fishing to uh, uh, bunny wrangling uh, to, uh, <laughs> to one, one of my ideas that, you know, I, I hope we can do as another misadventure, um, uh, pet grooming. Oh, but just in, in, you know, introduce a situation where mac and cheese think they're in a safe, safe situation. They're relaxing, having a vacation, taking a break from their jobs of trying to conquer the planet. And then stuff happens uh, unexpectedly. <laughs> uh, and the other thing we want to do with fishing is that myself, I grew up fishing, um, it's, you know, uh, as kind of a, a you know activity over the summer, activity with friends and family. And we wanted to kind of introduce a, f- a fun, casual way that people can engage in the world, uh, play these, play VR, but at the same time, it's a game that's easy to play, but really hard to master. Mm, uh, yeah. And so we try to come up with kind of those combination of like, what would make sense with Invasion Asteroids universe, but also what we think is kind of a fun pastime activity that we can take into VR and put our own little twist on it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, that you haven't seen before in the space. Yeah, I really liked it. I Again, I was like, huh, this is really interesting that it's fishing, fishing in space. But it's so fun because you can see all the like alien fish creatures. And I love that you have your little aquarium and you can just like mm-hmm. ah, relax and look at your fishies <laughs> and be in just this really cool environment. So I love yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate it. And, and we we were, you know, we... We really respect the other games out there in the space. You know, uh, I think, you know, games like Real VR and, and Bait kind of showed like mm. fishing in VR really works. Uh, and for me, you know, I grew up, you know, playing fishing games, whether it be, you know, in Animal Crossing or, uh, you know, on Nintendo Wii, like Fishing Resort. Uh, so, and I even, you know, was part of a unreleased game that was at EA at the time uh, that was, you know, kind of alien monster, monster fishing. Uh, using like the, the old school we this was like you know 15 20 years ago but you know fishing's always kind of been in the background of like uh, mm. i always want to do a fishing game fishing title and vr is kind of the perfect platform to be able to have a fishing game i wanted to bring up a detail that i found that you did in the game as far as fishing goes and it's something that really impressed me because it was brilliant when it comes to immersion. You bring up games like Real VR, Fishing, and Bait, and they're great mm-hmm. games. But one problem with two separate hand controllers in any fishing game is you need to try to emulate a rod and reel. Yeah. And whether you have your hand six inches or 12 inches away, it's easy to break the immersion because you mm-hmm. see your hand still on the reel in the game. And in real yeah. life, it's floating off in the distance. In your game, it's like there's this lightning connection when you go to grab the reel. It's very alien. It's very virtual gamey <laughs> but it doesn't matter because in the game your hand stays in its correct position but you can still reel from three inches from the reel or 12 inches yeah. from the reel and it was just such a smart idea and one of the things we found through play testing through uh, through community involvement with the game is that everyone has a different style of how they fish uh even on the team that we played that some people just like playing with one hand one hand reeling some people like having you know one hand you know, at their side and the other, you know, uh, other hand with the rod, you know, in a really odd position. Myself, I kind of fish sidearm. Um, so, you know, it's everything's kind of angled, you know, to the left, essentially, when I when I fish uh, with my right hand being the dominant hand. And because of all those different fishing styles and, and how people want to position their hands, we try to be as uh, user friendly as possible when we were doing this, just to making sure that there's really no wrong way to fish. And then the day, it's really about how you strategize, what fish you want to catch, which equipment you want to, to use, and figuring out the right timing and patterns that the fish have. Less about worrying about is my hand in the right, you know, 90 degree position or, mm-hmm. you know, am I too close or too far? Just because, you know, real you know, fishing is a supposed to be relaxing, enjoyable activity, not necessarily a hardcore workout. Uh, right. right. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, I love that. And all the characters, they're all adorable. They have their own little languages and stuff. So I'm curious, you've made a name, obviously, in the VR industry. Do you hope to ever go to mainstream, take some of these to like the big screen movie theaters, any of that? So Invasion, uh, we announced a while back that Invasion was picked up by 
uh, Fox Disney uh, a few years back um, to be made into mo motion picture. So all of the all of our projects that we try to do are really about uh, not just being a VR only project, uh, but have the opportunity to be whether it's a television show or a film or or even in, even to a game that may or may not be in VR. But when we think of, of any of our franchises, any of our IP, uh, we always kind of think with that in mind: is, is this idea, is this uh, property, does it have legs to stand in different ways? Um, and for Invasion, the goal is always to kind of try to make it into something more than just a short uh, into uh, a VR film. And the way we looked at VR at the time, you know, this is back in 2015, 2016 when Invasion came out is that it's really hard to break into the animation, into the traditional uh, movie industry. You know, you have the Disney's, you have the Foxes, you have, you know, all, all the big players in the world. And VR gave us a little bit of an advantage that there was mm -hmm. both not too many types of experiences like that in the space, but also it, we believe that interactivity is, is the new form, is a new kind of thing for animation, for storytelling in general. And that's where kind of the combination of the, our skill set of uh, our background working at, on films, you know, Madagascar is the, the Pixar films of the world, but also our background is in gaming. Myself, I've been in the gaming industry for uh, 15 plus years. We have other veterans who worked on this project and other projects that have worked on games like The Sims, um, worked on games like Farmville and so on. So the combination of both the gaming side and the film side is kind of what makes us unique in terms of a studio. And where we look at where we want to go, where I have, why, where, where I hope to go with Galactic Catch is also, you know, hopefully as people you know love and embrace it, ideally we can take it to other mediums as well, uh, whether it be VR or non-VR. That's my hope is really to kind of extend, you know, extend us into as many people's home as possible. Nice. That's awesome. You can really see that connection of VR and film together because you know, like Invasion was like just a VR film and it was so adorable and. Perfect. I wanted to ask, Galactic Catch costs $12.99 on Oculus, and we've had so many free experiences from Baobab. How have people reacted to this being a full game that actually costs money? So far, really well. Honestly, people were surprised that we actually priced it at $12.99. Most people expected it to be a higher price, just because <laughs> they think both other games like ours in the space are both higher priced. Um, and I think there's not too many low, you know, on the lower price side on the Oculus space. It seems like the trend is for many of these uh, new to, new games to go higher and higher price um, mm -hmm. on, you know, you know, adding more content, graphics, etc. But you know, everyone's been, you know, you know, has liked both the lower price for it, you know, has been the huge plus for us, especially because you know the the campaign, the story is about, you know, it takes about five to six hours if you play through straight, um, which is you know a lot of content, you know, over sixty uh, fish to catch, you know, six different worlds to explore, uh, close to uh, thirty different decorations you can craft and customize. And the combinations of how much, you know, you can do in your aquarium are pretty much endless since you have three different aquariums and at, and you can craft the same decorations over and over again to customize it at, at your will. Uh, so we believe that, you know, for 12 to 9, you're essentially getting, you know, multiple weeks, months of gameplay, uh, you know, for a pretty good price. For sure. And it's something you can always come back to, too. Like you said, it's, you know, fishing is this relaxing experience. So even if you've gone through all the worlds and you know, done all the things, you can always just go back and just chill yeah. in the beautiful. Well, and especially, you know, how we set up the fish in this game is that there is, uh, you know, fish from uh, common and rarity to legendary and rarity. And depending on the situation you're in, not all the fish are going to show up uh, all the time. And so just like, you know, just like real world fishing, you might get the right bite, you know, you might be able to catch a legendary fish, but in many cases, you might have to come back the next day or the next week for the for the chance to catch a legendary fish, and so not all the fish are always going to be there for you to bite on, um, and that you know that is I think adds to that both lore and the relaxing aspects of just being in the, in the idea of fishing, but also for anyone who who's used to fishing in the real world, you know it is you know it is pretty common that you're not always going to catch what you want to catch, um, mm -hmm. even, if you, even if you stretch as to your best your possibility. You may not catch anything in the real world of fishing, in my <laughs> experience. <laughs> yes, yes. I, 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 most of my fondest fishing memories are just being on the boat, being on a canoe or something like that, and just uh, with friends and just 
waiting for the chance to catch something. Uh, yeah. you know, and it's just been, it was excuse to just get out there, eat snacks on the water pretty much was like, what was, you know, three fourths of my fishing experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it seems like people have not reacted negatively to the price at all. couple things. One, you priced it just over $10, which means if a friend has it, they can refer you with the referral code, get 25% off the game. Mm-hmm. So that brings it to like $10. But with all that, you're up to about a 4.7 rating on the Oculus store, which is a high rating out mm-hmm. for everyone out there who's listening. And almost all the ratings are four or five star, like 93% of the ratings are four and five star. They're, then the only lower reviews aren't saying that it's bad. They're wishing you'd add multiplayer. They might have found a bug here or there in the early days. How do you feel about that rating? And do you think there is more content coming to the game? Uh, yes and yes. So we, <laughs> we, we, uh, you know, we are overwhelmed by the positive reaction that we got from the community. I think we're a little bit over 100 reviews, you know, you know over you know, 4, 4.7, close to five stars. And all of it's been amazingly positive. You know, I don't think we had, I don't know if we even knew what our expectations were going in just because this is our first VR game. It's the first of many things for us. And so this is really kind of one big learning for us of what works, what works, what doesn't work. Uh, And the community has been really awesome with their response, giving us feedback. The first thing we are uh, trying to put in uh, in the coming weeks is uh, achievements to the game. Uh, nice. So that'll be our first big uh, update to the game. There'll be 34 achievements uh, that we're going to be uh, uh, releasing as a free update to everyone, uh, including a few secret achievements um, that uh, people have to discover on their own uh, to do. Uh, and then our big focus for sure is addressing the, the community feedback. Um, multiplayer is the big one, uh, and that will come in, you know, hopefully in a few different forms we, we can figure out. We're still at the very early stages of figuring out what we want to do in multiplayer, how to kind of both design something that's very familiar for uh, for fishing players and VR users, but also kind of our own twist on it uh, that, you know, that that will make it unique. But also, you know, one of the things that I don't think we expected, but we uh, we are now practicing much higher is giving, giving enjoying, allowing people to enjoy and relax uh, in the space more. So integrating things like a YouTube player and allowing mm. people to listen to their own music, other things nice. that just allows nice. them to spend longer time, you know, relaxing, enjoying the locations. Um, those are also some of the top priorities that we're looking into right now. I love awesome. that. I think that's that's a future for a lot of VR games, especially as we try to spend more time in games. I've seen people like Elite Dangerous. That's probably one of the most grindy VR games in existence, finding ways to put their YouTube player in there and stuff. Yeah. And I think that's, I think you're on to something there. Mm-hmm. That sounds great. You know, it's, and it's also just amazing what are the issues and the minor things that people discover that we might have missed out on uh, mm-hmm. as developers who have you know been playing this you know on and off for the past year and change. Um, you know it's but like I said, we are we are amazed and overwhelmed by the response of the community. Uh, and please, 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 you know, um, keep on giving us your feedback. Keep on you know follow us on Discord and, and our other channels. We'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, that's really the way we're trying, uh, way, main way we're trying to improve our game is listening and responding to your feedback. That's always great. Well, is there anything else that we didn't cover that you'd like to share with our listeners? Yes. A few things, uh, for anyone who follows us either on our discord channels or our social channels or anything else, um, we're doing a bunch of giveaways, uh, this will come up this month, uh, to celebrate the launch of Galactic Catch. A few more things we haven't announced yet, but uh, there will be a few more freebies for the community that we're we're planning on um, that we'll be announcing soon. But we right now have a Gleam giveaway uh, that uh, I think got uh, announced uh, uh, this past Thursday. Uh, but uh, please please join if you can. Um, participants will be able be eligible to receive things such as our our Art of Beobal book, um, which is kind of a hardcover uh, nice. uh, concept art book that goes through all the experiences we talked about from invasion uh, to Namu. Um, and, and highlights a few things that um, are uh, to, to be coming uh, in the That's future, um, as well as uh, uh, discounts and codes for our other projects, Bonfire and Bobby Ga, if, if you haven't tried them out yet. Uh, but please, you know, I would say for, for anyone, uh, you know, if, if you're able to join our community channels or our social channels, uh, we're trying as much as possible to make August kind of the month of celebration of the launch of Black to Catch. 
and giving uh, more and more to the community as, as part of that reward. Awesome. Very yeah, exciting. That is exciting to hear. And of course, if you're out there listening or watching, we're going to make sure there's links in the descriptions, the show notes. And we'll even try and get a link to that Gleam giveaway for you out there so you can help get entered in that too. But thank you once again, David. This has been awesome. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you, know, you guys taking your time. And thank you, uh, you know, for having me on the show. Um, you know, super, super, uh, super charged to really talk about Collect the Catch. You know, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, even though it's been my one of my babies for the past year and a half and, and two, this is kind of our first really time to be able to talk about it publicly with people, um, you know, since its launch. So thank you for giving, uh, giving me the, the time and the platform to be able to talk about uh, the project and the studio. Yeah, it's been so great to hear little tidbits and exciting things. So. Thank you. No, <laughs> and like I said, we're, we're excited to share Glock the Catch and all of our other experiences out with the world. And please, you know, please stay tuned for more, more updates, but uh, coming soon, achievements to Glock the Catch. <laughs> achievements, eventually multiplayer, and a whole lot more to watch out for there. So remember, if you're listening to the podcast, if you want to see some bits of Galactic Catch here on the screen, check us all out. We're, we're on YouTube for you, but we're also everywhere for you to listen to. Even Audible, which people keep telling me that's a feat. We didn't know we accomplished <laughs> that somehow. But check us out. Hit us with the rating if you have time. But just once again, we appreciate you being here for VR. And if it's time, you haven't gotten into VR yet, well, guess what you can do in Galactic Catch? Dive on in. Dive on in. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.